and welcome back to Bitcoin Advisors channel. Bringing it to you here from Ventura County line where we are practicing what we preach. Be awake, not woke. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We are awake here bright and early. So what's going on this week? Tomorrow is Apple Tuesday, not Taco Tuesday, where they're going to release the new iPhone. Then you've got Wednesday, the PP lies and CP lies report Wednesday, Thursday. And Friday, you're going to have the quadruple witching. If you want to find out what that's going to do to Bitcoin's price and a little more in-depth analysis on the markets, make sure you check out our YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you. Well, 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 it is Monday, Miracle Monday, Turnaround Monday. It is Monday, new week, new opportunities. A lot of things on the board this week we're going to talk about. Yes, I had a good surf this morning. Yes, I had a good weekend. I hope you did too. Uh, key events this week, we've got, again, the Apple Tuesday. You might say, Chris, how do you get how do you get all this information? Well, not only can you get it at um, myfxbook.com, but the Kabisi letter really, really uh, puts it in nice, puts it in nicely. Well, that wasn't very nice. Here we go. So um, key events this week, well, that was last week. Let's see uh, if I can get that chart back up. And I actually like this one. This is what we're all hoping for. But anyways, Apple Tuesday, uh, CPI Wednesday, PP lies Thursday, because you know they're lying about inflation. Initial jobless claims, ECB rate hike Thursday, and Fed balance sheet data. I would say the key dates to watch these days, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, and Friday should be a big day. So it should be interesting. Let's jump into the charts. Show me the charts. I'll show you the news, sir. Show me the charts. I'll show you the news. People come to Bitcoin for um, the gains and then they join the revolution. The revolution against the greedy greeds at the WEF, the World Economic Forum. And yes, the tyrannical left is beginning their next round of lockdowns or whatever they're planning. As you can see, a mutated coronavirus scientists are on alert. Watch out. You got to put a diaper on your face to get better. So we're going to be talking a lot about that in the coming weeks. But mostly we want to talk about Bitcoin price action right now because, well, um, we did say we had a bearish bias looking for kind of some resolution to the downside. Um over some time, but we still have not really broken a cre <laughs> broken the key cut a critical level. So I'm just gonna uh, throw up this little HPDR indicator here, and as you can see, we did close below the uh, historical range lows, 50% of the range lows there, uh, giving us the bias for a little bit more downside to 24,366. And 23,500. And let's see if we can line that up with the liquidation heat map. What is this? High Block Capital has a really cool program that shows you where the liquidations are set to be happening. You can see a nice bit of liquidity here at 24,800. Do I think it breaks it today? No. Uh, why is that? Well, I could be wrong. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. Uh, why is that? Well, we already had a big move. And so uh, what you're going to see on the other side of this is that now liquidity, the long liquidations, <coughs> sorry, short li liquidations, people are net short now. Over the weekend, they were net long. Then we had this little candle, this little fake out move. And needless to say, the next Major bounce, I think, will be of 24,861. 24,8. I think we'll get a bounce off of that level and then 24,371. So I'm going to write those key levels down uh, again for you. That was 248. Call it 24,879. Uh, and why is it so important to know where Bitcoin's going? Well, that's where the rest of the coins are going to go. 24,371. Bitcoin is the king of the market. 
Bitcoin is the dominant force out there. And we'll check in on Bitcoin dominance and uh, what that could temporarily mean. But uh, additionally here, you've got volatility increasing and Stokes cross down. Yeah, I would suspect that even if we get a little bounce back up here, a uh, little bit more continuation of the downside. So glad I'm catching that. Notice that it, we're coming off a major trend line. So that's kind of the bull case right there. The bear case kind of already been set. <clears throat> and uh, the only thing holding up the market right now is NASDAQ and S&P. Uh, NASDAQ and S&P, let's check in on those. We've been talking about, oh, look, we're filling the gap here, uh, filling the gap. And so key rejection level is going to be right here. Um, any kind of a rejection from that area would be good. Uh, back above this area is going to be well, if you're bearish, it'd be good. If you're bullish, uh, you want to see it clear back above this level. Again, bit of an inverted or, or regular head and shoulders here. Technically, not the best setup on the four hour, but the daily, perhaps you could still call this a head and shoulders. And this being the neckline pivot. Um, you could draw it like that as well, giving you a little bit more room. So when we start to break down, well, um, that overall target we have on S and P, why is that? Why is it? Why, why do we think, uh, the rally is going to get faded? I could be wrong on this. I mean, the market is pretty bullish right now and, uh, you know, sentiment is high in stocks. As you can see, NASDAQ almost making new all time highs. And I do believe NASDAQ is front running or leading the market. And if we do not reject off of that trend line, then, well, it's going to be new all time highs for NASDAQ and those tech stocks. What is front running the market? I think Apple and Tesla right now. Tesla up 10%, gaps up, parties to the upside, filling that gap. NVIDIA down, Microsoft up, Apple, Amazon, Amazon. Not quite there yet. <clears throat> Tesla's looking good. Apple, that's what I want to check on because we got those iPhones coming out tomorrow. Is that supposedly going to be a good or a bad thing? A bit of a gap fill and then party onto the upside for this one. Uh, has been one of the strongest in the market. Did make new all-time highs. Good job, Apple. Okay, carrying, carrying the market. So points for the bulls is stocks are going up. Points for the bulls, uh, Dixie coming down here and uh, probably going to confirm a drive of bearish divergence, hidden bearish divergence, prices making lower highs and the RSI is making higher highs. One, two, uh, three, four, and that should give us a move to the 1618 based on our um, four drive philosophy. The four drive and almost for me, one, two, three, four, five, almost uh setting uh in motion you know at least a 10 a, a test of this trend line where does the 1618 come in right there on the trend line pretty much over the next few days if we're going to remain bearish so if the economic data comes out and inflation is showing that it's hotter than expected you'd expect the dollar to rise right if inflation is coming in lower than expected you'd expect the dollar to go down which would be uh, points for the bulls. And kind of what's having me hold on to the last little bit of peace and prosperity for Bitcoin and not, you know, doom and destruction is this indicator on the weekly time frame for Bitcoin. It is called the hash ribbons indicator. And that measures minor profitability, minor profitability. And what does it say here? Well, essentially is this interesting. This is KuCoin. This is Bybit, right? But what is the number one exchange out there, guys, that I don't use? It is not that. Yeah, it's Binance. So that's the chart to look out for. And <clears throat> we are bouncing off the trend line right here, coming off the weekly trend line. And I would suspect a bounce unless we just break it here today. Um, so Thursday, Friday, Wednesday, you know, want to look out for what happens to Dixie. If Dixie can put in another higher low, now it's going to need to uh, 
And this doesn't always work out, guys. It doesn't always work out, but um, as long as Dixie kind of holds up here and doesn't tick below last week's low, then that would be good. That would be good for the bulls on Dixie and the bears on Bitcoin. Um, does this line up with anything else? Using our Fibonacci retracement tool. We're coming in in the 382. That's typically where you bounce. So as long as we hold this level here at about 103.88, then uh, it's going to be another higher low on the daily time frame. And you would expect continuation in the direction of the trend. What else is happening? Well, volatility is now cooling down here. So for this entire move to the upside, volatility has been coming down. So if we do see that higher low get formed here, that's going to be bearish for uh, traditional assets and uh, all the other assets uh, that are tied to Dixie. Um, how's my golds doing? Gold probably popping up today. Gold up 0.2%, holding the trend line to the down. Again, our short-term down target for gold is down there at about 18, 1884. Silver holding on by tooth and nail here and uh, getting a bounce off the box. Um, so wrapping up my thoughts on Bitcoin, I saw a great analysis this morning from Mr. Kyle Dupes on Crypto Banter. And you guys should check them out. They're awesome channel. Uh, well, they, they've, they've got some really interesting stuff and some good news and products and whatnot. But um, here was, uh, you know, I don't remember the exact analysis, but I did kind of catch this, um, this idea, which is how people traditionally get faked out big time is something like this. What, what tends to happen is everybody's going to put their stops right here. Looking for a move down to, you know, 20, 19,000, something like that. <clears throat> but if you see something like this, which is a deviation below the bottom side of the range. And you get, you know, a nice little candle down, scares everybody out. A lot of stops are going to be right below this area right here. So it comes down slightly. <clears throat> retests. And then puts in a higher low and does something like that. That would be bullish. And I would be looking for decent sized move up from there. Um, and that would be the fake out. That would be your, you know, opportunity to go long. Um, if you FOMO'd in up here and you're trying to kind of offload some positions, right? You know, if we get a bit of a bounce here, that would be the opportunity. And bringing us back to why I think the market has a chance here is this hash ribbons indicator, <clears throat> which fired off a signal on the weekly time frame. Uh, again, uh, this signal has formed 15 times over the last, well, since the beginning of time in Bitcoin. And what it says is traditionally speaking, once this, uh, once this blue buy signal happens, um, you're not supposed to take out the prior week's low on a candle closing basis. Which, did we have a weekly closure? Yes, we did. Let's see what happened. So, we didn't take out the wick yet. And most thought thinkers out there say this is still valid, right? So, um, it never... Breaks that low on a candle body closing basis, which um, as I'm looking at it here, candle body closure basis, the prior wick low. I mean, it's really close, guys. It's really close. But uh, traditionally speaking, you don't break that low before Bitcoin makes new all-time highs, new all-time highs. So. That's the point for the bulls. The other thing is this that everybody's talking about on the interwebs. Let's see if it's on my secondary chart or is it on this chart? It's one of my old, old charts. I don't know if I'm going to have it up right now. 
But it is the death cross on the daily time frame. The death cross, which is, yeah, it is coming in. It is almost to fruition. And traditionally speaking, the death cross, the first one <clears throat> doesn't usually get the big move, right? After being away from the death cross for a long time, uh, you got the death cross and then it got jammed in your face and made new all time highs. But the second one did tend to get the better move. So this would be the first death cross after a, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but the first death cross after, um, after not having a death cross after a hundred percent rally usually is the wrong one. Uh, so we could again, bounce off this trend line and, and, you know, what's going to happen is if we start taking above 28 two, then a lot of the stop losses are going to get hit. Uh, above this level, we're going to come up to this level at 27.7. And above here, you know, it could start to potentially make some new all-time highs and, um, or not new all-time highs, but at least taking out this high. So if we see something like this, higher low, boom, that would look good for uh, a nice rally back up to 31,000. Um, it isn't until we close a daily below this wick that I am, you know, going to be looking for this next kind of level down and maybe we should use our fib to see where it could potentially go. And that is going to line up right with the one six, uh, with the six one eight, the bull trap, bear trap area. So do we test this trend line one more time? Probably, probably wicks down there. Um, and then we kind of see how the end of the week holds. If Bitcoin holds this area for the rest of the week, puts in a higher low, that would be the case for the bulls. The bears, you know, we make a new, you know, just candle body closure below here and we're hanging on by a thread right now. So <clears throat> that's, these are the areas I'm, I'm watching out for right now. And with that said, I think this video has been long enough. Hope you have a blessed and highly favored day. I'll be back tomorrow. I guess we'll take a look at Ethereum really quick here. We looked at a lot of assets, but uh, don't want to leave out any. And this does look like it is playing out with the ETH Bitcoin chart. Um, we also talked about tether dominance, uh, hurting the altcoins if tether dominance is going up. Not, not necessarily a good thing. And we just don't want to see really a daily closure back above this level at 875. And it's heading there right now. Uh, volatility is starting to decline, which is good. Um, we just don't want to see it tick back up. So that's going to hurt the altcoins. What else are they talking about? Uh, the FTX liquidation. Let's see if I can pull up something there. That's that's not Twitter. Uh, FTX liquidation. So supposedly, I think it's $600 billion, $600 billion is going to be sold. Uh, it's going to be a big week for crypto Wednesday, FTX liquidation approval. Uh, okay, so that's another one to watch out Wednesday. Um, CPI data, PPI data, brace for volatility. Um, I had a list of the coins that they are. Yeah, here it is. Coins being held and liquidated. Solana, $685 billion alone, I think. Or $685 million. Don't quote me on that one. Solana, FTT, ETH, Bitcoin, Aptos, Doggy, Matic, Bit, whatever that is, Ton, XRP. Oh, no. Oh, no, my XRPs. Oh, no. Um, so be watching out for these coins to rip to the downside. Again, not totally... Um, Worried about these, but uh, Solana actually has a good trade setup presenting itself, which I think, <clears throat> um, I don't have enough time to go into today, I don't think, but essentially it would be the weekly range. Is it the weekly? Um, let's see if I can draw it out really quick here. Yeah, that's the mid-level right there. So it looks like we are heading down towards at least 1487. 
Uh, breaks below there, well, technically, uh, you'd be looking for the retest of this trend line. So boom, down, there's your short entry, and there's your target. Uh, vice versa, if we see something like this, where we deviate below, and then we put in a higher low. Can I drag this up? No. Let me redraw it here. Uh, deviation below this level. And then we pop back up, make a higher low. There's your entry for a long, back to the top of the range. W, that would look nice for a long. So both long and short setups. If Bitcoin gets crushed, obviously a lot of these altcoins are going to get crushed. Uh, that is for Solana. I said I'm going to go over Ethereum, which looks like it's breaking this major trend line at the moment. The ascending triangle measure move to the downside or the descending triangle. So that was the deviation above back to. Uh, again, if you're just looking at this as a kind of massive range, the bottom of the range here at a thousand bucks, eleven hundred, uh, probably going to be some stops along the way at thirteen seventy two. And I just want to look at the heat map really quick for Ethereum. Heat map for Ethereum or the liquidation level. So people are net short right now. So what's likely when that happens, they're going to get a bounce. We're going to bounce it to the upside, take out the shorts and then send it down. The market maker is going to push the price where the most liquidity is. And we've got 55 million here and another 59 million there. But we've got how much right here? That big blue circle it says 17 million. 68 million, that's what I saw it. 68 million there, we've got another 55 there and a bunch in between. So I think there is more um, more opportunity for a short-term bounce and you know, if it rejects at 1566, that'll be your indicator. Okay, we're probably gonna come down and visit these levels, the level down 1533. But <clears throat> this is the one to keep your eye on. The next major level down, which we just took out this liquidity here, is all the way down at 1475 and then 1310. Perhaps we get some bounces from those areas and uh, then we judge it from there. All right, that's it for today, guys. Have a blessed one. Have a good one. And we'll be back tomorrow. Take care.